This is Food for Thought with Deborah Walker. Today on Food for Thought, I'm talking to iridologist and master herbalist John Andrews. And to be honest, it's been no mean feat getting him on the show considering how packed his schedule is. John lectures on five continents within the fields of modern iridology and natural medicine. He's the author of a number of books, has received six international awards for his pioneering contributions to the field and runs a practice in both East Yorkshire and London. John, how are you today? I'm very well, very well, uh, very well indeed. Thanks, Deborah. How are you? I'm fine. A fellow northerner. Fantastic to talk to you. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. I love to keep the northern flag flying. Absolutely. I love those northern dulcet tones you've got. I really do. I feel like I'm at home. Now, I'm really pleased you can join me. It's taken me about a year since I originally actually emailed you. I know that. And um, I just wanted to say that you're one of the most generous teachers I've ever had the pleasure to learn from. And I attended one of your workshops. It was phenomenal. And the information I gained afterwards, not just actually in the session, but afterwards, was um, in incredible amounts. And you were so generous with it. So I'm going to encourage before we start anyone who's listening to attend one of John's workshops because they are truly valuable you for money so now currently you're teaching about chronobiology tell my audience what that exactly means well thanks for the glowing reference there deborah <laughs> the uh, the check is in the post thank you <laughs> <laughs> well, with with, uh, with chronobiology what we're looking at really is the application of the natural uh, patterns and rhythms biological rhythms in the human body with different systems and with chronobiology and natural medicine we're looking at how we can optimize the prescription uh, of natural medicine so the patient has a better result and usually they need to take less of the medicine that they're prescribed Um, so really with chronobiology and natural medicine it's a, a synthesis based on my own empirical experience in the clinic and also based on scientific research in chronobiology, linking the two systems together. Now, it's actually not a new area of scientific research, is it? It's been, well, it was first initiated in the 1970s, and the real basis to the research was really with sleep and working mechanisms in the body. So what researchers were looking at was the pineal gland and also the secretion of the hormone melatonin. So obviously melatonin helps regulate the sleep pattern and other parts of the body as well. Mm. Um, So the initial research was in the 1970s and it's just expanded for all areas of the body since then. So with my approach with chronobiology and natural medicine, what I'm looking to do is is look at things on a molecular level, you, you could say. So we're looking at specific hormones, the daily rhythm and pattern of different hormones and immune cells, also cytokines, which are the inflammatory uh, mediators in the immune system, and also neurotransmitters, and looking at how they interact together. And so we've got specific opportunities during a 24-hour time period to influence either negatively hopefully positively, uh, the action and activity in a positive way to bring the body back into balance. It's making things far more specific, isn't it? It is. I mean, with, well, generally, with med- historically, with medicine, most of the time, and also with natural medicine, you've got a very kind of generalised way of taking things most mm. of the time. So usually it's, you know, before food with a little bit of water, and, and that's it, kind of get, get on with the job. Yeah. But what I've found with my own practice, applying the chronobiology uh, principles, is that people seem to get better quicker, majority of the time, and also you, know, you find better therapeutic results and people have less adverse reactions and they have less um, interactions between medicines or between supplements and medicines and also they you know they have less um, side effects generally and better results overall <laughs> so it's very precise and the good thing about chronobiology as well is it's very 
flexible. So you can apply it to different forms of medicine. And I mean, initially it started off in pharmacology. So what they're looking at with chronobiology and pharmacology is something called chronotherapy or chronopharmacology. So the time of day to take a specific uh, drug or pharmaceutical to influence the system. So for example, you could look at taking statins and cholesterol is produced by the liver uh, through the early hours from midnight onwards. So the best time with research they found to take um, statins was on an evening. And now that is widely um, indicated you know, in the pharmacological press and within the medical profession. Um, but you can also extrapolate that information in terms of natural medicine. Mm. So whether you're practicing nutrition, naturopathic uh, medicine, homeopathy, homotoxicology, um, even types of structural work, and even dental work, for example, certain dental procedures, even surgery, you could apply the chronobiological principles and you would, it would be better for the person involved. It's really fascinating this because when I was training, my tutor was very much into timings of things and cyclic, the cyclic nature of life uh, yes. across everything. And I actually um, wasn't quite there with her, if I'm absolutely honest, and poo-pooed it at the time. And yes. um, I did actually ju- truly think she was fairly balmy with, with that side of the work. I was more focused on more, more of the scientific side of nutrition at that point. And, yes. you know, she worked with the meridians and all sorts of things. But it it completely left me cold and then I realized that actually in practice you're, you're absolutely right timing can be everything and our clients often subliminally know timing matters and that they've got these clock cycles happening and they're influencing them, but they don't really know why do they and it, in some no. respects we've moved away from that understanding of the cyclic nature of life haven't we I th- I th- we used to, well, we, it used to be obviously part of us, and mm. we used to be aware of that on a, you know, an intuitive level without the scientific understanding, I think, going back, you know, in the midst of time. But today, we, you know, we've got a scientific understanding that we can apply to that intuitive process. And I think the combination of the two is, you know, a very powerful tool in natural medicine. Um, so with chronobiology, you can look at optimal times through the day, windows of therapeutic opportunity to get better results for the patients. And they respond, you know, really well to, to, to what's happening with that. And say, for example, you wanted to influence the immune system, the certain aspects of the immune system that are going to respond better when things are taken in the early hours, in the morning, there's certain aspects of the immune system where things respond better taken on an evening, you know, before midnight or at different times through the evening, depending on the, the condition or the immune cells that you want to influence. So if you're a nutritionist or a, her- a medical herbalist or a homeopath, you can apply those principles that we have in chronobiology to gain better results with those types of uh, conditions or systems. So why are we not hearing more about this research in not just natural medicine, but medicine as well, um, more widely in regards to how people are taking supplements, uh, medications and things? I think in terms of pharmaceutical medicine, there is a swathe of research um, in different, you know, in different languages, published in medical journals. Mm. There's several um, international chronobiology conferences where they're looking at chronotherapy as well. So the application of specific times um, to put, to use the uh, pharmaceutical. And in terms of chronotherapy as well, they're not looking at, not just looking at the benefits of what you're taking, but they've found if people take this certain drug at this particular time, for this particular condition, then they have less side effects statistically as well, less adverse reactions. So that's a very, you know, very important feature. 
and I think it's growing. I think the knowledge base is growing. It's starting to filter through. Uh, um, it's only on a very minor level at the moment. Obviously, it should be a lot more widespread, you know, because every, everybody would benefit from that knowledge. But it's starting to filter through. Um, but it takes time. I mean, it's a new concept. I mean, it, medicinally, it can take decades for something to reach the initial mm. kind of uh, best of research or the initial theory. It can take many decades to reach the final uh, point where it is accepted just as being you know, general part of um, health or medicine. And um, so we're still going through that process. And I think that's the same within natural medicine as well. Well, the thing um, is, the arena of chrono... Growing. Sorry. Growing. Yeah, chronobiology, the arena of chronobiology I was reading, um, really wasn't taken um, that seriously as a science until very much um, only just recently, wasn't it? That's right, <laughs> yeah. It's only been in the last 10, 20 years, which is, you know, it's in its infancy, in, in a sense. And the research kind of funding put into chronobiology is only very minimal, you know, compared to other types of funding. Uh, but I think it's a very exciting area, and we can extrapolate a lot from the research that's already happened uh, in terms of natural medicine and natural health, and it's going to grow. And we need to do our own research in natural health, so that's what I've been conducting in terms of my own empirical clinical experience and also uh, discussing that in different countries as well, and ha ha having practitioners feedback to me with the results uh, in terms of chronobiology. So there's a, you know, there's a lot of scope for change, and we just need to start applying the knowledge once we have that. What have been your key findings today from your own pra practice? In terms of the chronobiology and natural medicine, mm -hmm. yeah. What I would tend to use as, a, well, as an integration would be a combination of either a nutritional approach, um, a phytotherapy or phytotherapy or herbal uh, medicinal approach with a homotoxicology approach. So homotoxicology, um, for those of the listeners who, who may be a new term with, is a modern form of homeopathy, mm -hmm. which using kind of complex forms and an amalgamation of different uh, potencies and dilutions yeah. of homeopathic remedies and herbal remedies and nutritional um, nu nutritional agents. Uh -huh. um, so in my own field, I mean, I specialize in PNEI, so psychoneuroendocrino immunology. So I'm looking at the, which sounds very grand, <laughs> <laughs> very confusing, <laughs> but in essence, really what we're looking at is the effect um, stress and emotions have on the physical body. Mm. So with whatever people are practicing, we know that with most conditions, some people would say with all conditions, there's a foundation or a basis or a causal factor with stress and unresolved usually emotional issues or emotional conflicts leading to the development of that physical condition. So with PNEI, we're looking at the integration between the psychological, the neurological, the hormonal, with the endocrine system, and also with the immune system as well. So stress and emotions, negatively or positively, hopefully positively, can influence the different systems with the immune, immunity and with how, how the hormonal uh, communication takes place as well. So in essence, that will decide, that's the deciding factor, whether we're going to be in balance or not as an individual. Mm -hmm. So whether we're in homeostasis or we're out of balance in some form. So with chronobiology, I've applied those uh, principles to p &E I with my own practice. So especially with the hormonal system, uh, looking at how we can influence uh, the developing field of neurotransmitters mm. in natural medicine and, and in health generally, and also with the immune system and hormonally. I don't know if I mentioned hormones. Yes. <laughs> it's really very fascinating. There's a long list there. <laughs> yeah, it is indeed. And effectively, 
I'm just thinking about shift workers and people who um, yeah. are traveling time zones and things like this. Um, do you have the ability to almost reset their clock when actually they've got it so far out of balance with this approach? Well, that's a you know, very interesting uh, kind of question, really, Deborah, because with chronobiology, obviously, they, initially they were looking at, solely looking at melatonin mm. and, uh, and sleep patterns and people who, who travel uh, through time zones a lot um, and also shift workers. Mm. So I see a lot of people who do both in ter- you know, professionally in terms of the clinic or clinics mm. And there is a lot you can do to buffer the effect of that kind of shift work and moving through time zones. And sometimes if people are working the same shift, but through the night, for example, all the time, what tends to happen is the body clock resets. Mm. So everything switches around. So when they stop or retire from that particular occupation, they have a hard time readjusting. It can take many years, for the, if at all, mm-hmm. for the system to readjust. So that links in with the pineal gland and melatonin, but really that is set, our internal body clock is set in the hypothalamus, which is at the base of the brain, mm-hmm. um, just below the uh, thalamus mm-hmm. and connects with the pituitary gland. And the hypothalamus has this part of, well, there's a part of the hypothalamus called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, mm-hmm. or SCN, as an <laughs> yeah. abbreviation. <laughs> and within the SCN is, the, is our chronobiological clock, or clock. So that is set for each, each uh, person on the planet. And so uh, different systems key into that. So the hypothalamus should regulate the chronobiology on, a, on an individual basis. <laughs> So if we can influence that hypothalamic function and body clock, then we can help people, you know, travelling through time zones mm. and working different shifts. But working different shifts and travelling, you know, travelling through time zones has a massive effect on people's sleep pattern. Mm. Anybody involved in natural health or any form of uh, health practice, you know, should never underestimate the importance that sleep has for the health mm. in terms of mental health, emotional and obviously physical health, you know, for that particular individual. So sleep's fundamental. So if you, if you have a, a slight disruption of the sleep pattern or chronic disruption, then it has, you know, profound effects for that individual and how they recover from any imbalance that they have. So you always need to regulate the sleep pattern. I feel nowadays that a lot of people have... Um chronic disruption of their sleep and actually don't realise it I think I think you're right Deborah. with the people probably 90% of people that I see um, in the, U- the UK and different countries you know so it's not specific to a certain geographical area uh, but all, all, all around the world probably 90% of people have a, a with a health problem have, have a sleep problem mm-hmm. as well so they have a disrupted sleep pattern in some form. So there's different influences on that. And it is the foundation to a lot, a lot of different problems. Yeah. Because when we're asleep, the immune system repairs. That's when all the neurological uh, repairs take place. We process a lot of stress and emotions. You know, the digestive system is working over time <laughs> when we're asleep. The immune system goes through several different processes whilst we're asleep. Um, so, it's, you know, it's fundamental for our, our health and how we recover as well if we have a problem. Now, the, this field of chronobiology must be having an influence on genes and because fundamentally it's about how we adapt to our environment and that has yes. to have a genetic effect, doesn't it? Well, that's a very interesting kind of forthcoming area, really, because with genetics or on the frontiers of genetics, I mean, there's different authors which have talked about this, you know, over the last 10, 10, 20 years, people like 
uh, Bruce Lipton, for example, um, talking about how genes can be activated and deactivated by SNPs or single nucleotide mm-hmm. polymorphisms. And depending on what we're going through, you know, in terms of our nutritional status, our stress situation, and even the experience of our grandparents can activate or deactivate our genetic patterning. So this, you know, obviously links in with our chronobiology as well, because mm-hmm. we all have an individual chronobiology. And, you know, this can be, we can have a tendency, and obviously we bring this tendency in when we're born. I mean, it's the genetic inheritance um, that we don't have a choice in, so to speak. So it's learning to adapt to our individual genetic patterning and also in terms of how the chronobiology can activate or deactivate that particular pattern. Hmm. It's incredibly interesting, really, because timing of supplements could have such a fundamental effect, not just over your lifespan, but over the next generations. <laughs> yeah, well, what we do now can influence our, you know, our, our grandchildren. It's like it's the passing on of the Olympic torch, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. But we're kind of, you know, what we do through our life influences not just the next generation, but the generation after that. If geneticists are correct, yeah. which all the, you know, all the authorities seem to point to that being the case. <laughs> now, it's a, very, it's a very exciting field. It is. I have to say, when I started reading about it, um, I got very excited, far more excited than when I started to study years ago. <laughs> 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 and um, But only because clinical practice has proven for me this to be absolutely right, that I know that... Um, sometimes all I do is shift the timing of the supplements and it will change everything. Or I may even halt the supplements because of a certain moon cycle and then reintroduce them at another time and they actually work far better or, you know, and there's less of them. It's absolutely fascinating. So I I have to say it became more interesting because of the experience that I've actually had in practice. Well, with, um, I mean, it's it's a very uh, kind of prudent observation, I'd say, Deborah, because when... You're looking at chronobiology, we've got daily cycles with different systems in the body. And we have, you know, a classic example of a monthly cycle would be the, you know, the menstrual cycle, mm. into, you know, ovulation for women. And we've also got seasonal cycles too. So that's in terms of blood sugar balance, mm. those three seasonal changes, uh, prolactin secretion mm. as well, which is... a a hormone that's very susceptible to stress, which can affect um, fertility yeah. or the immune system, for example. And you've also got um, se- well seasonal cycles relating to uh, metabolism and our metabolic turnover. So, and there's also lifetime cycles as well yeah. that we go through. You know, especially in terms of the hormonal system, and um, we're beginning to understand with neurotransmitters so as we go through life our secretion of growth hormone um, melatonin hormones like testosterone for example all go through different cycles <laughs> which is you know very important to understand in terms of how we approach the person and how we can bring them into balance well, what you realize and, is that, sorry Deborah go on God, I was going to say what you realize is that life's impossible without these regular and recurring time cycles <laughs> yeah I mean even if you know most of the time well all of that happens subconsciously we don't have to put a lot of conscious thought <laughs> into that happening all the time so it, if you know even if we're not aware of the chronobiology it still influences our life yeah so being aware of it allows us to gain more control over our genetics, you could say, and also in terms of how we live our life. So different times of the day, for example, if someone just took something, someone had underactive thyroid, hyperthyroidism, and they took something either pharmaceutically or in terms of natural medicine, just in the morning, 
they may gain some benefit from it, but if they took that same medication on an evening be- between 10 p.m. and midnight, then what you'd probably find is that they'd gain more benefit, in theory, over mm-hmm. time, and that you would need to take less of, less of a dosage. So it works out you know, a lot safer, it's a lot more economical, and the patient responds better. In this space, in, 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 you know, in the majority of cases. Well, they do know that the the there are effectively timings for drug drug pathways, don't they? That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different pathways which can be influenced in terms of pharmaceuticals, and we can influence that in terms of natural um, medicines as well. Mm. Now. You talked about individual chronobiology. Um, yeah. A point I found really fascinating was made, made by David Dinges. Um, he's got he's a yeah. PhD. I assume you know that name, Chief of Division of Sleep and Chronobiology in the Department of Psychiatry and Associate Director of the Centre of Sleep and Cocadium Neurobiology. So there's no short title there if he wants that on his uh, badge. But he actually says <laughs> it's a robust biology that evolved as a function of Earth's rotation on its axis relative to a star every 24 hours. He says chronobiology is based on orbital mechanics. If we ever discover life on another planet with a different orbital period and different days and months and years, that life will move to those rhythms. Its biological clock set to an entirely different uh, time from ours. Absolutely amazing, I thought. And of course, it makes complete sense. It does. It, it is, it's, an, it's amazing kind of statements. But in one sense, when you understand the principles, it's, it, it, it's not because it's a universal truth. Mm. Um, so it, it, you can apply things from the cellular level in terms of hu- human health and balance. And that is in, you know, intimately connected with kind of quantum mechanics as it were and uh you know even even moving out into space and how the planets move and yeah it, and obviously the gravitational force and different um phases of the earth um or kind of orbits with the earth you know have a very big influence on on our health and also the activity of the sun mm. as well can have a According to the, re- the research that's been conducted, they have a profound influence on, you know, how effective different treatments are. Yeah, it's absolutely it's fascinating. It's a very exciting thing. It is. It's a fascinating arena. Absolutely fascinating. How, and what, 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 what you, you, yeah, what way raised your interest in it specifically? Why, why did you pursue this area? In terms of chronobiology. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. What I, fa- <laughs> what, I fa- <laughs> what I found was working with uh, the iris and examining people's irises with iridology is that there's a part of the iris which um, connects with our own body clock. Mm. So I was finding correlations with markers or signs at that partic- with that particular structure in the eye and also people's conditions and how they responded or not to what they were taking at specific times. And I found initially with certain asthmatic patients and also certain uh, hypothyroid patients that they weren't getting the results that they should be getting. Mm. So I decided to research the area further and we found you know specific windows of opportunity so it was working with patients who were looking for more than what was being offered at the time yeah (laughs) really interesting now i don't want to set you up against albert einstein but he once observed that the the only reason for time is is so that everything doesn't happen at once do you think that still applies in (laughs) chronobiology (laughs) I, th- I think so. I think so. And it's interesting with chronobiology because, in terms of the human body, you could you, you could take, you know, zinc at a certain time to influence the immune system, you know, from a nutritional angle. Um, and if you take it in the morning, for example, it's not going to work in the same way. You know, the pathways are not going to be open. 
Yeah. Whereas if you take it on an evening, the body's ready for that particular information. So anything that we take is really adding to the quantity and quality of the information exchange in the body. And really, you know, natural health and health generally is about having the correct exchange from cell to cell of different pieces of information. Mm. So it's looking at ways, and what we understand now is just the beginning. Um, it, it is, in the future, it's going to become more refined. Um, it's going to advance from where it, where it is now. But the understanding at the moment allows us to, to gain extra assistance for that, that person and better results as a practitioner. And, you know, that's right across the board with whatever you practice. John, this has been one of the most fascinating interviews I've done um, over the three years I've actually been interviewing. I have to say it's, it absolutely piqued my interest and um, sent me off in another series of reading. So uh, Amazon's been very, very busy delivering, I have to say, <laughs> since, <laughs> since I started reading about all of this area. Um, tell people how they come and find your website how they work with you how they listen to you in your workshops where are you next for instance well with chronobiology um we have a seminar on friday the 26th i think it is of june mm -hmm. so later this month in london um so that's friday the 26th between 10 a.m and 5 p.m and if people are interested in attending, then they can book or inquire through um, allaboutnaturalmedicine.com. So the website is allaboutnaturalmedicine.com. And I will, well, I'm working on the finishing touches to the book on chronobiology and natural medicine. So this is a, a kind of a, a first of its kind in this field. Yeah. I'm hopefully the first of many, but it is the introductory text of this new work, um, Chronobiology and Natural Medicine. So if people are interested in receiving a copy of that later in the year, if they email me, Deborah, on johnandrewsiridology at hotmail.com. So that's johnandrewsiridology. It's a catchy title. <laughs> johnandrewsiridology. John at hotmail.com and then I can uh, answer any inquiries in terms of the clinic, in terms of courses I can keep people in the loop in terms of uh, publications as well Absolutely brilliant. On Food for Thought today, I've been talking to John Andrews, master herbalist and iridologist and an absolute pioneer in the field of chronobiology for uh, natural health. Thank you very much John Thank you very much, Deborah. Thanks for your time, and I hope the listeners have enjoyed uh, some of what we've covered, if not all. Bye.